Have you ever heard of Greystone Mansion in Beverly Hills, California? It's an eclectic blend of various architectural styles, but predominantly Tudor Revival. Completed in 1928, Greystone is more commonly known as Doheny Mansion, named for the original owner, the son of wealthy oil tycoon Edward L. Doheny Sr. But on February 16, 1929, Edward Ned Doheny Jr. and his secretary, T. Hugh Plunkett, were found dead in a guest bedroom in an apparent murder-suicide just months after moving into the palatial estate. What happened that night and why? Were these deaths the result of a political scandal or something else? Welcome to Nightmare Houses. Edward Ned Doheny Jr. was born on November 3, 1893, in Los Angeles, California, to Edward L. Doheny, an ultra-wealthy and prominent oil tycoon, and Carrie Wilkins Doheny. He was the couple's second child. His parents had a daughter, Eileen, born in November 1884, but she had a heart condition and was in poor health. She died of heart disease on December 14, 1892, at eight years old. Edward Jr. was born just a year after his older sister's death. They called him Ned for short. His parents separated in April 1899 and divorced by the time Ned was six years old. His father met Carrie Estelle Betstold in 1899 when she was working as his company's telephone operator. He married Carrie Estelle just a year later on August 22, 1900 in New Mexico. Ned's mother died on September 27, 1900 at her home. It was reported that she ordered medications and battery fluid for the house and took the battery fluid instead of her drugs. The coroner determined that her death was accidental, though it was thought that his mother died intentionally after losing him in a custody battle. Ned's stepmother raised him, and he attended the Los Angeles High School, graduating in 1911. In 1912, the elder Doheny discovered oil at Elk Hills and obtained leases from the federal government to extract the oil. That year, Ned attended his first year of college at Stanford. Theodore Hugh Plunkett was born in Illinois on March 28, 1896, but he grew up in Los Angeles. Unlike Ned Doheny, who grew up a millionaire, Plunkett was from a working-class family. In 1912, Plunkett was a mechanic at a service station owned by W.P. Smith, vice president of the Santa Fe Railroad. From the start, Plunkett was described as a quiet and secretive man. Between 1913 and 1916, Ned Doheny left Stanford to attend the University of Southern California, where he earned a degree in business. On June 12, 1914, Ned Doheny married Lucy Smith, the daughter of W.P. Smith, and Plunkett was hired as the couple's chauffeur. Ned's career began to blossom following his education, and he was elected to the Board of Trustees and as president of the Alumni Association at his university. Plunkett continued to serve Ned Doheny and eventually became his personal secretary and confidant. Ned and Lucy had their first child, a daughter they also named Lucy, on June 21, 1915. Hugh Plunkett married Harriet Hall in June of 1916. Ned and Lucy's next child was Edward L. Larry Doheny III, who was born on February 8, 1917. A few months later, when the United States joined the conflict, Ned and Plunkett began service in World War I. Ned Doheny served as a lieutenant in the U.S. Navy. In August of 1918, Plunkett spent time in a naval hospital stationed in New London, Connecticut, for cellulitis. This common bacterial skin infection causes redness, swelling, and pain in the infected skin area. Following the war's end in 1918, Ned joined the Doheny oil business as company vice president, and Plunkett returned to work for Ned as his personal secretary and chauffeur. Ned and his wife had another child, son William, on March 12, 1919. In 1921, Ned founded the Doheny Oil Company, following in his father's footsteps. In March of 1921, when Albert Fall became the Secretary of the Interior of the United States, he convinced President Warren Warren G. Harding to transfer control of the Elk Hills lease and the Teapot Dome Oil Reserve from the Navy Department to the Department of the Interior, which Albert Fall oversaw. 
Fall then leased the land to Harry F. Sinclair's Mammoth Oil Company, Doheny's competitive rival, and Edward Doheny's Pan American Petroleum and Transport Company without competitive bidding. The leases were granted in exchange for bribes and kickbacks to Fall, who received hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash, bonds, and other gifts. In 1921, Ned's father instructed him to withdraw $100,000 from his own brokerage account and to deliver it to U.S. Secretary of the Interior, Albert Fall, in Washington, D.C. for one of these gifts. Ned did so and traveled to D.C. accompanied by Plunkett to personally deliver the funds. Fall then used this $100,000 to pay off his own personal debts in exchange for the Elk Hills lease. In April of 1922, a Wyoming oil operator wrote to his senator, John B. Kendrick, and was angry that Sinclair had been given a contract to the lands in a secret deal. On April 15th, Kendrick introduced a resolution calling for an investigation of the deal. Republican Senator Robert M. La Follette of Wisconsin led an investigation by the Senate Committee on Public Lands. At first, La Follette believed Fall was innocent, but his suspicions grew after his office in the Senate office building was ransacked. Democrat Thomas J. Walsh of Montana led a lengthy inquiry into the matter. But while the government was investigating the oil leases, Ned returned to life as usual following his trip to Washington, D.C. Plunkett, on the other hand, seemed haunted by it. Around this time, Plunkett began having bouts of mental instability and manic episodes. Despite the troubles, he remained employed by Ned and the two seemed as close as ever. On January 11th, 1923, Ned and his wife had another son, Patrick, and Ned continued working as an executive in the oil industry. Meanwhile, Albert Fall was covering his tracks in Washington, D.C. No evidence of wrongdoing was initially uncovered, as the leases were legal, but records disappeared mysteriously over the next two years. Fall had made the leases appear legitimate, but accepting the money was ultimately his undoing. Then, unexpectedly, on August 2, 1923, President Harding died while in office at age 57. He had been ill with gastrointestinal troubles just a few days earlier. Earlier. His death was ruled as a cardiac arrest, and he was never autopsied. After President Harding's death, evidence proving Fall's guilt emerged. By 1924, the remaining question was how Albert Fall had become so rich so quickly. Money from the bribes had gone to Fall's cattle ranch and investments in his businesses. As the investigation was winding down with Fall innocent, Walsh uncovered evidence that Fall had failed to cover up. Doheny's $100,000 loan to Fall made in December of 1921. It was this discovery that broke open the scandal. Civil and criminal suits related to the scandal continued throughout the 1920s. But back in California, Ned and Lucy welcomed their fifth and final child, son Timothy, on April 5th, 1926. By now, Ned had focused on work and building his dream house on his father's land. The land was originally part of the El Rancho Rodeo de las Aguas, the Ranch of Gathering Waters, in 1852. Between 1895 and 1900, Edward Doheny Sr., purchased various parcels of land around Los Angeles, including 600 acres of the El Rancho de las Aguas at the foothills west of central Los Angeles as a potential oil drilling site. This particular area did not work out for producing oil, but Doheny used the property as a vacation ranch. In 1926, Ned's father gave his son a premium parcel of land consisting of just over 12 acres with sweeping citywide views as a wedding gift. It was this land that Ned would build his home. He commissioned architect Gordon Kaufman to design a palatial mansion. Construction began on February 15, 1927. The estate was to be called Greystone and was completed by 1928. Greystone is two stories, 46,000 square feet, and has 55 rooms. The architecture is described as early Los Angeles baronial, an eclectic blend of architectural styles, the most notable being Tudor Revival with the prominent gables throughout. The name is derived from the gray color of the Indiana limestone used for the walls, which are three feet thick. 
The building is made from a steel frame and reinforced concrete. There are five red brick chimneys, each uniquely crafted. The roof is composed of Welsh slate in shades of red, blue, and green, and is nearly four inches thick. The large English-style windows are made of lead. The mansion's primary building materials and features include Italian marble floors, hand-carved balustrades, oak and walnut paneling, gorgeous chandeliers, and two regulation-sized bowling alleys. The two-story home is built around a central courtyard and fountain. There's a main wing, a servant's wing, and a recreational wing that contains the bowling alleys, a billiard room, and a theater. The property included several outbuildings, including a two-story firehouse off the servant's wing. The first level of this building contained three large stalls for fire engines, while the upstairs contained two small apartments. Stables, garages, workshops, and a greenhouse were also on the grounds. These outbuildings were all connected and made out of brick, painted white, and over 15,666 square feet. The stable had room for seven horses, plus an equipment room. The garage initially had room for eight automobiles. Apartments were located above the garage to accommodate mechanics. The greenhouse has a glass roof and walls with a brick base. There's a seven-room gate built in a similar style to the main house near the Doheny Gate, the original entrance to the estate. The estate is over 18 acres, with 16 acres full of formal gardens, wooden areas, orchards, pools, lawns, and walls. Walkways. Decorative lights and fountains adorn the gardens. At the time, it was the most expensive home built in California at well over $3 million, fitting for one of the world's wealthiest oil families. In September 1928, Ned Doheny, his family, wife Lucy, their five children, and multiple servants moved into Greystone. By this time, Ned was the vice president and treasurer of the Petroleum Securities Company and worth tens of millions of dollars. Public and personally, things were going well for the Doheny family. But in 1927, while Greystone was under construction, the Supreme Court ruled that the earlier oil leases had been corruptly obtained through bribery. The court invalidated the Elk Hills lease in February 1927 and the Teapot Dome lease in October. While all of the evidence tying Ned Doheny to the scandal became revealed, Plunkett began to spiral out of control as the government intensified the investigation. Plunkett's wife divorced him in 1928, and his bizarre behavior continued. By this time, Dr. E.C. Fishbaugh, the Doheny family physician, began treating Plunkett and had prescribed him various narcotics and other drugs to treat his episodes. His conditions had been described as nervous, irritable, and stubborn, with periods of rationality. With his condition and nervousness worsening, Plunkett was living in one of the guest rooms at Greystone with Ned and his family by the beginning of 1929. On the afternoon of Saturday, February 15, 1929, Plunkett was having another manic episode and acting irrationally by slamming doors, banging silverware, and throwing knives deep into walls. By now, Plunkett was also heavily dependent on the drugs prescribed by his doctor. It's unclear what transpired over the next few hours in the mansion, but around 10.30 p.m. that night, Mrs. Doheny called Dr. Fishbaugh to Greystone in a panic. Plunkett was acting crazed and frenzied, and Ned was trying to calm him down. It appeared that, sometime in the evening, Ned, dressed in his pajamas and a night robe, went into Plunkett's room to see what could be done. Ned tried to get Plunkett to lie down on a chaise lounge to relax, but Plunkett resisted. Then, there was a struggle between the two men. At some point, Plunkett broke away from Ned, grabbed a revolver he had owned for several years, and kept Ned hostage. What happened next is from the report of the doctor, who had arrived at the mansion by 11 p.m. He and Mrs. Doheny waited in the hallway outside the bedroom. It appears Ned was able to calm Plunkett down long enough for the two men to sit a few feet apart, but suddenly, a shot rang out. Plunkett shot 36-year-old Ned Doheny, his longtime employer, in the head, killing him instantly. The bullet struck the left side of Ned's head and knocked him in the chair over. Plunkett immediately left the bedroom and entered the hallway, screaming for everyone to stay out of his room. He then slammed the bedroom door shut and another shot followed. 32-year-old Theodore Hugh Plunkett had turned the revolver on himself. When the doctor was able to break into the guest room, he found the two men deceased on the floor. The room was a mess and the evidence of the struggle was clear from the overturned furniture 
and disarray. Immediately, it was ruled a murder-suicide, and no police investigation was ever conducted. The relationship between Ned and Plunkett had been described as respectful and more of a friendship than employer-employee, and the event shocked everyone involved. Because of the timing of the tragedy, it was widely speculated that Plunkett killed his boss, relating to secrets regarding the Teapot Dome scandal, and was fearful of the investigation, rather than just having a mental breakdown. Both men are buried at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, within a few hundred yards of each other. In October of 1929, Albert Fall was found guilty of accepting bribes from Edward Doheny Sr. and served one year in prison. Conversely, in 1930, the senior Doheny was acquitted of paying bribes to Fall, but convicted of a separate charge of contempt of Congress. Further, the Doheny's corporation foreclosed on Fall's home in New Mexico because of unpaid loans that were part of the same $100,000 bribe. Sinclair served six months in jail on a charge of jury tampering. Following the tragedy, Lucy Doheny and her children decided to stay in the new home. The young widow was administrator of Doheny's estate of around $14 million in stock of the Petroleum Securities Corporation. Three years later, she married Lee M. Batson, a San Francisco and Los Angeles financier, who joined her at Greystone. Lucy continued living at Greystone until 1955, after which she and her husband sold most of the original land to Paul Truesdale Corporation, developers of Beverly Hills' prestigious Truesdale Estate Homes. The following year, Lucy and her husband sold for approximately $1.5 million the remaining 18.3-acre parcel, including Greystone Mansion, to Henry Crown of Chicago-based Park Gray Corporation. However, Crown never occupied the site, but rather leased it out as a popular filming location. In 1965, the city of Beverly Hills purchased the property from Crown for approximately $1.3 million, and plans to install a 19 million gallon water tank on the property since the hilltop site provides natural water pressure. The site continues to serve as the city of Beverly Hills' largest reservoir. On September 16, 1971, the entire 18.3 acre site, including Greystone Mansion, was formally dedicated as a public park by the city of Beverly Hills. Hills. Five years later, on April 23, 1976, Greystone Estate was officially recognized as a historic landmark and was entered into the National Register of Historic Places. On January 25, 2013, the mansion was designated Historical Landmark No. 4 by the City of Beverly Hills and entered into the Local Register of Historic Properties. The City of Beverly Hills leased the mansion to the American Film Institute between 1965 to 1982 for one dollar per year, hoping the institute would pay for repairs and upkeep. Since 2002, the city of Beverly Hills has maintained a webpage for the park at greystonemansion.org. Greystone is now a public park and a location for special events, including the Beverly Hills Flower and Garden Festival. It's now famous as a filming location due to the beauty, the manicured grounds, and the location. The 2007 film, There Will Be Blood, loosely based on the life of Edward Doheny Sr through the Upton Sinclair book Oil, renovated its two-lane bowling alley to include it in the film. In addition to numerous events there, the mansion plays host each year to Catskills West, a theater arts and drama camp run by Beverly Hills Parks and Recreation from mid-June to early August. The camp presents a play in the pool area twice during the summer. The mansion is also a venue for the play The Manor by Catherine Bates, which takes place in various rooms. The audience is separated during the play to watch watch scenes in different orders. The Manor's plot is a fictionalized account of the Doheny family, including Doheny's involvement in the Teapot Dome scandal. The Manor's plot is a fictionalized account of the elder Doheny, including the involvement in the Teapot Dome scandal and his son's murder. The play has been performed annually at Greystone Mansion since 2002, making it Los Angeles's longest-running play. Greystone has undergone several restorations and renovations since 2006. Despite a lack of conviction, the Teapot Dome scandal had a lasting impact on the reputation of the Doheny family. Many suspect that Ned and Plunkett's deaths were connected to the scandal, and rumors of their involvement continue circulating. We will never know what happened between those two men, the extent of their relationship, or what secrets they kept, but it ended tragically for both at Greystone. Greystone Mansion will always be haunted by the events of that night in 1929. In the years following, 
following the scandal, there were efforts to reform government contracting and leasing practices to prevent similar abuses of power in the oil industry. The Teapot Dome scandal remains one of American history's most notorious political scandals. It serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of corruption and the importance of government transparency and accountability. Thank you for listening to Nightmare Houses. For more information, including photos and references, please visit www.nightmarehouses.com. Until next time, goodbye.